、ただいまよりウェビナーを始めさせていただきます。本日はニュージャージー州投資環境ウェビナーにご参加いただきありがとうございます。私は本日司会を務めますジェトロニューヨーク事務所の米山と申します。どうぞよろしくお願いいたします。講演に先立ちまして、本ウェビナーをお聞きいただく際の留意点に関しご説明をさせていただきます。本日のウェビナーは同日や機能を利用して開催いたします。日本語でお聞きになる場合は画面下の地球儀の形をした通訳マークから日本語を選んでください。英語でお聞きになる場合は同じく英語を選んでください。また言語設定をオフにすると同時通訳なしでお聞きいただけます。参加者の皆様のマイクとカメラは主催者の方で自動的にオフの設定にさせていただきます。講師への質問については、Q&A 機能を活用してお願いいたします。日本語で構いません。本日の講演資料については、事前にお送りした本ウェビナーの視聴用 Zoom リンクと同じメールに入手方法が記載されています。なお、本日のウェビナーを収録したアーカイブ動画へのアクセス方法を後日お知らせいたします。仮に本ウェビナーのシステムがシャットダウンされた際には、事前にお送りしたウェビナー視聴用の Zoom リンクから再びログインをお願いいたします。最後に本ウェビナー終了後にアンケート画面が表示されますので、どうぞご協力ください。それではプログラムに入ります。まず、はじめにウェビナーの開会にあたりまして、ジェトロニューヨーク事務所長の川本より、皆様にご挨拶をさせていただきます。川本所長、よろしくお願いいたします。マイクをオンにしてお話しください。改めまして、ジェトロニューヨーク事務所長の川本でございます。ニュージャージー州投資環境ウェビナーの開催にあたりまして、一言ご挨拶を申し上げます。本日は200名を超える多くの方々に参加登録をいただきまして、誠にありがとうございます。また、本日のウェビナーを私どもとともに企画、ご準備いただきましたニュージャージー州政府経済,経済開発機構、中途ニュージャージーの関係者の皆様に対しまして、本ウェビナーの主催者として熱く御礼申し上げます。さて、アメリカ北東部にありますニュージャージー州は、大消費地のニューヨークに隣接をしておりまして、ニューヨーク通勤のベッドタウンとしてのイメージがありますけれども、州内にはライフサイエンスをはじめ、IT など先進テクノロジーのクラスターが存在しておりますし、アメリカ東部地域の物流拠点にもなっています。さらに最近では、洋上風力など再生可能エネルギーの分野でも注目を集めておりまして、成長を続けている州であります。また、州内の教育水準も極めて高いものがありまして、例えばプリンストン大学。こちらの卒業生に数多くのノーベル賞受賞者や、世代会の著名人、あるいは最高裁判所の判事の皆さんが名を連ねておりますし、ラトガーズ大学という古い歴史のある州立大学もあります。そういった有名私立や州立大学が多数、このニュージャージー州には存在をしております。アメリカ商務省の統計によりますと、ニュージャージー州に進出をしております日系企業の数は216社ということで、国別では第1位になっています。それから雇用者数は2万6200人ということで、州内のビジネスコミュニティにおいて、日系企業が存在感を示しております。ジェトロでは今後ともニュージャージー州政府、関係機関の皆様と協力いたしまして、日系企業のニュージャージー州への進出やビジネス展開を支援してまいる所存であります。本日のウェビナーが皆様方のビジネス推進の一助となりますことを記念いたしまして、私の挨拶をさせていただきます。ありがとうございました。はい、川本所長ありがとうございました続きまして本ウェミナーの共催者であるニュージャージー州政府を代表しまして経済開発機構 NJEDA 経済成長最高責任者チーフエコノミックブロースオフィサーのブライアン・サビーナ様からご挨拶をいただきますサビーナさんよろしくお願いしますマイクをオンにしてお話しください Thank you very much for that warm introduction. We are incredibly excited to be partnering with Jetro on today's event. First, on behalf of Governor Murphy, Tim Sullivan, our CEO, and our whole staff, let me say thank you to our partners at Jetro, especially President Kawamoto, 
Executive Director Yoniyama, and Mr. Nakajima, who have been essential in helping to put together this event. Let me also thank my team at the NJADA, especially Sarah Kadu, who has been essential to putting on this event. I'm excited about this event for uh, three reasons. Uh, the first is because the relationship between Japan and New Jersey is strong and growing. Uh, as President Kawamoto mentioned, uh, our, our trade is incredibly strong. Last year, in 2020, more than $5 billion worth of goods went between our two, our two states, almost a 30% increase over the previous year. We're home to innumerable number of Japanese companies, including many of whom are on this call today, Panasonic. Rico Holdings, Sun Chemicals, Konica Minolta, Daichi Senkium, Subaru, all of whom we hold dear as important partners uh, in our group, important bridges between our two communities. Japan is in fact the number one source of Greenfield foreign direct investment uh, in New Jersey over the last four years. We're incredibly that much of that investment is in critical sectors of our economy, like life sciences, clean energy, and transportation logistics. So really, we start from a base of being uh, incredibly strong partners. The second reason I'm quite excited about this opportunity today is because New Jersey's economy in and of itself is strong and growing. Last quarter, uh, quarter three of 2021, the last quarter for which we have data, New Jersey was number four in the United States overall in terms of GDP growth. We are a leader in high growth sectors, and the ones we were talking about today, but also in new growth sectors like FinTech, uh, growth sectors like sports wagering, uh, and of course, uh, the different aspects of life sciences, clean energy, transportation logistics. Governor Murphy has a clear plan for making investments in our future, whether that is with new airports, new physical ports for offshore winds, whether that's new financing programs, like a $500 million new Evergreen Innovation Fund, whether that's investments in diversity and inclusion, or that is attracting new companies to grow thousands of jobs here in the state. In fact, Rutgers University, uh, our primary state university, recently announced the largest investment in our state's history in applied and transitional research in a major innovation hub uh, in the middle of our state. We are clear about where we want to go, and we're clear that we're making the investment to achieve those goals. And finally, number three reason of why I'm excited about today is that events like today matter. They help us build understanding. They help us build relationships. They help us unlock partnering and investment opportunities that can benefit both of our communities. With that, uh, let me finally say thank you to you for participating. We cannot wait to tell you more. We have a great lineup of experts on our side. But we can also uh, cannot wait to, to uh, hear more about your, your desires and how you want to invest and how we can help make those business cases. Thank you so much. あ、皆さんありがとうございました。え、続いてえ、本ウェビナーの共催者であるニュージャージー州の投資誘致機関、え、チューズニュージャージーのチギオ開発ディレクターウィリアムヌーナン様よりニュージャージー州のビジネス投
New Jersey, and I'm going to give a broad overview. And I know that we're going to have individual sectors that are going to give you a little bit more detail. But I want to give you an overview of New Jersey and what Choose New Jersey can do to support you as you either look to come to the states, deciding on a state to come to, or if you're already here, how to expand within New Jersey. Next slide, please. So we have been around for over 10 years now, and we help companies come to the state. And we do that by explaining what it's like to work here, what type of businesses come and how we support them, and what it's like to live here. Because as important it is to have a successful company, it's important to have success in living in the state of New Jersey. Next slide, please. Choose New Jersey, as I said, is an independent organization, and we have offices here in Newark. So you, we'll see you come in from the airport. Uh, we also have offices in Europe and in India. Next slide, please. So as I discussed, there are certain areas that Choose New Jersey can help an organization in understanding what it's like to come to the state, what opportunities are here, and we do that in a variety of ways. And through the generosity of our board of directors, all of our services are offered complimentary. It starts off with market intelligence, understanding any questions that you might have about coming to the state, whether it's workforce or what type of opportunities are here, associations that you can work with. We help you understand from a logistic standpoint, what type of whether it's office space, manufacturing space, whether you're a logistics company, a technology company, whatever kind of information, we can support you in that and then offer you guidance through uh, introducing you to real estate agents who can work on your behalf. As you see, there's a close association with the New Jersey EDA, the Economic Development Authority, the Business Action Center here, and the governor's office as well. We can help coordinate all of those resources for you make sure that you're getting introductions to the right folks at the right time. Um, as the folks from the EDA are gonna go over, there are so many programs that the state has that from an economic development standpoint, Governor Murphy has made such a strong push to being friendly for all of our business partners. Along with all of that support, we also have relationships with our institutes of higher learning, as we've already discussed, Princeton University, Rutgers University, all on our board of directors. We help support them. And as they're looking at other countries or other locations, how they can do memos of understanding and how they can help support folks that are coming here as well. And finally, once you decide to come here and you wanna get the word out that you're coming to New Jersey and you're excited to be here, as excited as we are to have you, we can help publicize that as well. Next slide, please. So as discussed, there are numerous, numerous sectors that we are gonna to discuss today, but understand that there are any number of these sectors that we have specific people who guide these sectors, whether it's manufacturing, there's gonna be great talk about clean energy. I happen to lead the film and digital media sector and also financial services in the state. Uh, we have very strong food and beverage. Life sciences, you know, we are known, New Jersey is well known for that. And as discussed right at the very beginning of the webinar, from a logistics standpoint, New Jersey is perfectly suited as you enter into the state. And from a technology standpoint, um, world renowned for the, the things that have been uh, developed here. Next slide, please. So not only are we a great place to have your business, but it's a great place to live. One of the exciting things that I get to talk about is where do you wanna live? What type of environment would you like to live in? Do you wanna live in a city, a very urban environment? Do you wanna live in the suburbs? Do you wanna live at the beach? Or do you wanna live in the mountains? New Jersey, although a very small state, has all of these that are available to you. And you can decide whether you wanna live in a small town, you wanna live near the beach, as I said, or an urban environment, and you can pull your employees from all of those areas because of the size of the state, the ability to draw on the talent that's here is exceptional. Next slide, please. So we're very proud of a lot of things around the state. Number one, 
education. So where do you want to come for your employees? We're the number one state in the country to raise a child. Best for early education. We have the best sub public school system in the country and have for years. And we're number one for a STEM high school. So it's important not only to have your job successful, but then the folks who work for you as they come here to understand that they will be successful as well with their family. Next slide, please. Another one of the subjects that we talk about all the time when we're discussing the state is our diversity. As we all know that a more diverse environment is a more successful environment. And so in New Jersey, we are proud to say that we are number one for foreign language you know, education. Rutgers University, our state university, is one of the most diverse in the country. We have a great number of foreign born residents who feel comfortable here. And Jersey City, which is um, right next to where I live, the most culturally diverse city in the US. Next slide, please. So as I said, I wanted to take a brief amount of time to talk about the state of New Jersey, what Choose New Jersey can do to support you, and now I leave it to the folks at the EDA to go into further discussions on how we can support you coming to the state. Thank you very much for your time and look forward to speaking with you. はい、え、ヌナさん、ありがとうございました。え、ここからは、え、ニュージャージー州政府、経済開発機構の各部門の責任者の方々から、え、同州における、え、ライフサイエンス産業、え、再生可能エネルギー、洋上風力発電 輸送物流インフラの状況についてまそれぞれご説明をいただきますまず初めにライフサイエンス産業の状況についてライフサイエンス部門リードのロバートサバリス様よりえ、説明をいただきますえ、ここで少し補足ですがあの先ほど冒
generation of pharmaceuticals and therapies, uh, not only to the state of New Jersey, but, but to the world. Next slide, please. This slide uh, is uh, a key slide that I'd like to just highlight a few uh, basic features uh, and you see them highlighted in the center. Um, we are home to 14 of the top 20 uh, blue chip global companies, which all operate in New Jersey. Uh, we also have 12 of the top 20 medical device companies operating here in New Jersey. 50% of the yearly FDA approvals come and are generated by companies that are um, uh, uh, subject to creating these new molecules and, uh, and, and are obtaining uh, the level of approvals that are required not only to uh, yield their products in the United States, but beyond that globally. We are uh, in fact considered a next generation state for supporting cell and gene therapy development, which is at the forefront of what we call personalized medicine. New Jersey houses 42 teaching hospitals, which is phenomenal, and five of the key medical schools. So all in all, we are a premier state when it comes to the life science industry. Next slide, please. Uh, just a, a few key historical uh, factors that I think are very important for us to keep in mind. So. Uh, New Jersey, in fact, is the birthplace of the immunotherapy. Um, we are the state in which the first ever CAR T cell therapy was, uh, was, was generated. Uh, we invented the cure for hepatitis C, uh, which is not a small thing. And we also uh, have an astonishing uh, feature, which is the first FDA approved 3D uh, printed drug. So as you can see, we are truly the state for innovation and life sciences. Next slide, please. Uh, I spoke a little bit about the importance of innovation and uh, what would be the future of uh, the life science industry. Uh, one of those uh, areas is cell and gene therapy development. Uh, in fact, we are uh, the providers of 25% of the cell and gene therapy drugs that are not only developed, but also manufactured in our state. And uh, of course, you see an array of companies that are well known uh, to many of you because they are in fact global uh, companies. Next slide, please. One of the uh, key takeaways that I pointed out in the beginning of my discussion is the overabundance of uh, square footage for life science space. Um, I think uh, this is an important feature, especially if we wish to continue to innovate and uh, support uh, those companies that are looking for uh, ready-made spaces, especially in the lab area, whereas um, we will, uh, in fact, have one of the highest levels of inventory in all the continental 50 United States. Uh, the main goal for us is to continue to uh, look at the features of innovation and startup companies. Um, and that being said, uh, in this slide, I will point you in the direction of the NJ Bioscience Center that is, uh, in fact, owned by the EDA in which we have 300,000 square feet of laboratories and offices and does support, uh, of course, incubating companies that are looking to start out and uh, develop the next generation molecule for a new drug. Next slide, please. So just to point out uh, some of the features and the advantages of the upside of New Jersey, this is a comparative analysis that we'd like to offer between some of the competing states and cities, of course, all well-known. Uh, as you can see, we are in this case, which is a positive result on the lower side of the cost per square foot as compared to many of our other com competitions or competitors, uh, which, uh, which uh, feature, of course, uh, strong in the life science world of, of the United States. Uh, the end result is we are 
on average 40 to 60% cheaper than the other leading competitive markets. Next slide, please. So uh, just to point out uh, that there are a few unmatched uh, areas for us. Uh, the first one being that we have 200,000 plus scientists and engineer that makes us number one as far as concentration in the United States. So wealth of resource and talent pool, especially the younger generation coming out of our excellent academia. Uh, we are seventh for being the most racially diversified population in the state of New Jersey. I think uh, many of you that are um, knowledgeable of New Jersey or have toured our wonderful uh, state, uh, you will uh, very much uh, be able to encounter uh, the uh, diverseness that we have in background and uh, of our population. And uh, in regards to the pipeline, we have about 150 plus higher education institutions in our region, making, making our, our state very, in fact, very attractive. Next slide, please. So in, uh, in regards to resources, which is always one of the big questions when someone wants to take an undertaking in, uh, in being able to locate themselves in the United States, our workforce today represents 430,000 life sciences employees broken down between 30,000 physicians. As uh, we pointed out, 200,000 plus between science, scientists and engineers and about 5,000 biochemists. Uh, our growth is uh, pretty much within the 3% range and we are looking to add almost threefold the amount of workers as compared to Massachusetts. Next slide, please. I have a bit of good news for all of you. Uh, another comparative analysis uh, shows that if uh, you happen to uh, cross over the river and uh, set up uh, your business and your life in, in, in our state, uh, your purchasing power would go up uh, by twofold. That means moving from New York into Newark would render you, your average purchasing power 200,000 versus the 100,000 that you would be left with after taxes in New York. Next, please. So here's the bottom line. Uh, in life sciences, uh, I am uh, your key point of contact and I would really uh, be able to uh, look forward to continuing to grow the fabulous uh, business that's coming from Japan and our state, the key takeaways are let's get started. I'm here to help everyone get established. And I think together we can grow both in the wealth of innovation and programs through our uh, uh, funding mechanisms and, uh, and, and tax abatements. Next slide, please. Again, my name is Robert Savarese, Senior Advisor for Life Sciences, and I look forward to answering your questions. Thank you so much. Arigato. Hi, Savarese san, arigato gozaimashita. Tsuzite, saisei kano energi, yojo, fuyok hatsten no jokyo ni tsukimashite, clean energy bumon director no parabi madakashira sama. それからウィンドインスティチュートマネージングディレクターのジェン・ベッカー様より説明をいただきます。マダカシラさん、ベッカーさん、よろしくお願いします。マイクをオンにしてお話しください。Um, thank you very much for the opportunity and I'm really excited to share more about the state of the clean energy economy in New Jersey. Can you flip to the next page? New Jersey has very big, bold commitments to clean energy. Under Governor Murphy's leadership, the state has committed to transitioning to 100% clean energy use by 2050. Obviously, we know that this is a very bold and an ambitious mission, and this will require that EDA, along with other state agencies, as well as companies such as yourself work together to help the state get to this goal. Including in this, this ambitious goal of getting to 100% clean energy by 
clean energy are specific goals that the governor has laid out in the state's energy master plan. The energy master plan outlines key strategies um, to, to get to this goal. This includes installing seven and a half gigawatts of offshore wind by 2050, as well as accelerating the pace of deployment of both offshore wind and solar. The energy master plan also includes specific targets for utilities to reduce, uh, to demonstrate a reduction of 2% and 0.75% respectively in the electric and gas consumptions. The energy master plan also has a goal of getting the state to install two gigawatts of energy storage by 2030. So we know that these are bold commitments, but beyond commitments, the state has already begun to invest significant amounts of money to ensure that these goals are realized. So as you can see here on the right-hand side, there's been over $7 billion in public expenditures via the New Jersey Clean Energy Program in the last 20 years. There's been over 20 billion in public and private sector solar investment in the state. And more recently, there's been over $95 million of annual funding through the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative, or it's a cap and trade program to support innovation in clean energy in the state. Next page, please. So we have commitments, we have the dollars that we've begun to invest. We have also made progress to start deploying towards these targets. So as you can see here, um, transportation sector is a huge emphasis for the state. Transportation accounts for over 40% of New Jersey's emissions. And in the energy master plan, we have a specific goal to try to decarbonize the sector entirely. And to this end, this particular slide shows you the progress that the state has made. We have over 600 electric vehicle charging stations and many hundred more charging outlets. In fact, with more recent work that the NJEDA has uh, done, we expect to see over 500 brand new medium duty, zero emission vehicles to start driving the streets of New Jersey anytime in 2022. The state, I know we've talked, of, you will hear from Jen Becker um, in less than 10 minutes about the state of offshore wind in the state. But New Jersey already has a key pillar of strength in solar. The state has more than 3.7 gigawatts of installed solar PV capacity to date, and this is only growing. Community solar projects continued to lead the way in the state of New Jersey. And in fact, New Jersey continues to lead and maintain its position in the top 10 states for the highest installed PV capacity in the country. Next page, please. So as a state, we have all the supports to ensure that your company thrives here. We have talked about policies. We have big, bold ambitions. We also have the supporting institutions and programs to ensure that you can, that you can grow in New Jersey, or if you choose to move to New Jersey, which we hope we, you do, we have the necessary support networks to get you there. So as you can see here, HACS, which is uh, a hard tech accelerator, is one of the leading global leading hard technology accelerators, which is a part of the SOSV group, recently decided to set up its North American headquarters in New Jersey, in Newark specifically, which means that this particular accelerator is expected to support several hundred new jobs that will be created, but more importantly, 
ensure that there is world-class leading edge innovation uh, coming to the state through supporting companies in the sector. New Jersey also has the number one manufacturing extension program in the country with over 16,000 local manufacturers of parts and materials that are ready and are transitioning to support the burgeoning clean energy economy. Further, we also have um, national labs like the Princeton Plasma Physics Lab and the FAA, both situated here in New Jersey to help support your business in cutting edge innovation. Another key piece of this puzzle is ensuring that the state has innovative financing techniques and mechanisms to ensure that we can grow this industry in the state. We are launching the New Jersey Green Fund, and I will talk about that in just a minute. We also have New Jersey joined the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative, and which auction then through the auctions at this program, the state has now got more than $200 million to deploy into programs to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. We also have active public and private collaborations. PSEG, for example, has committed nearly $17 billion of investment through 2025 in New Jersey's clean energy infrastructure. Next page, please. The New Jersey Green Fund is very much modeled along the likes of some of the leading green banks around the world. We are calling it the New Jersey Green Fund. The Green Fund will be set up as a, an institution that will provide products, financing products, to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, but more importantly, promote an inclusive clean energy economy. These are the three products that we currently have and are working on to deploy in 2022. And we are hoping to be able to work with you. So the first product is a commercial property assessed clean energy, which will support financing for building owners that want to borrow and upgrade their buildings to become more energy efficient. We also have a product called the Incentive Bridge Financing to support energy efficiency contractors. So for us at the state, it's not just important to deploy the capital and have policies, but it's also to ensure that we enable the people and the workforce that is necessary to support the growth of the sector. And the third product here is an open window product, meaning that we are looking to finance clean energy infrastructure projects, companies that can provide technology improvements and also those that manufacture clean energy technologies. So please be sure to check out the NJEDA webpage in the next few months as we launch these products and we would love to work with you on these. Next page, please. As I mentioned earlier, transportation accounts for over 40% of the state's emissions. And therefore, the state is committed to decarbonizing the transportation sector. We not only have a, a, a plan to decarbonize, but we now have a roadmap to get to our decarbonization goals. So if you can see here on this page, you see that we have a roadmap to 2050 and the interim targets that we need to meet in order to get there. In trying to meet these requirements, we are now deploying over $150 million into decarbonizing the transportation sector. Please go to the next page. The NJEDA launched the New Jersey Zero Emission Incentive Program, or NJZIP for short. It's a voucher program that is intended to reduce the upfront cost of buying an electric truck. 
So we are supporting the transition of medium duty trucks from a diesel counterpart to a, an electric version of it. So by deploying these vouchers to business and business owners, <clears throat> We expect and we are already seeing that in some cases, buying a brand new electric truck is cheaper than buying a diesel alternative. We have committed nearly $45 million in just 2021 with plans to deploy more funds this year. Through this program, we now have 18 very leading established vendors of zero emission trucks and buses registered to do business in New Jersey and are selling through this program. So please, I would encourage you to check out the NJEDA website to learn more about who these vendors are and how they're choosing to do business in New Jersey. Obviously, as you can see here with this program, we are attracting new businesses, 18 new vendors that did not have their business situated in New Jersey that are now doing business here. The goal for us ultimately is to make sure that we are able to localize the supply chain to ensure that this sector can grow within New Jersey. We also know that funding vehicles alone is not enough and that we need to take a more holistic approach, whether that's investing in infrastructure um, or ensuring that we are training the workers that are needed to service electric trucks and much more. And all of that is built into our approach to decarbonizing the transportation sector. Next page, please. And this is another product that we have in offshore wind. My colleague, Jen Becker, will speak to it in much more detail, but this is another product similar to the NJZIP, where we have an opportunity to localize uh, the supply chain for a brand new industry. And in this case, it's the offshore wind. This is a $350 million tax credit program, um, which requires that applicants create new full-time jobs. We expect that through programs such as NJZIP and the offshore wind tax credit, in addition to many other programs that we have at EDA, such as Emerge, that are set up to help businesses such as you, yourselves, we will be able to attract a significant level of private investments and also partnerships uh, with, with, with us here at the EDA. Please go to the next page. So in addition to the programs that I've mentioned, like I said, these are many, uh, Sorry, many of these companies here on this page have chosen to take advantage of the programs that we have been deploying in the state. We have over 700 clean energy companies here in New Jersey, and we hope that you will choose to be part of this ecosystem and grow here in the state. We are actively seeking opportunities to do pilot programs, whether that is in the transportation sector, energy storage, or even hydrogen and other alternative fuels, we're actively seeking companies' participation and collaboration with companies such as yours. And next page. This is the clean energy team and we're growing and we'd love to answer any questions that you have um, and looking forward to working with you. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. Good afternoon. So happy to be here with you all. Uh, you can go to the, the next slide, please. Thank you. So um, my name is Jen Becker, Managing Director for Wind Institute. I'm so happy to talk to you today about New Jersey's offshore wind efforts, uh, which are uh, complementary to, uh, to what Pallavi just described for clean energy. So New Jersey is an emerging hub for offshore wind energy. We're centrally located among the offshore wind areas on the East Coast. And under the leadership of Governor Murphy, we have an incredibly strong political commitment to offshore wind with a goal of 7,500 megawatts of offshore wind energy over the next 15 years. We've laid out a clear strategy to grow that industry focused on procurements, people, and ports. So our policies are about uh, reaching 100% clean energy while also establishing offshore wind 
as a pathway to creating jobs and developing the supply chain. We are focused on price and affordability, but we also see this as an important driver for economic growth and opportunity. Next slide, please. So uh, some of the top of the slide is, is cut off, but what, what this slide is showing is our procurement schedule that is run by the Board of Public Utilities. And what this is showing is that we have a clear pathway to um, procuring offshore wind energy. And that is uh, every two years through 2035. We've awarded three projects so far. Uh, the first went to Orsted Ocean Wind One project. And that project is, uh, the development is underway uh, with uh, surveying and permitting work and soon moving into manufacturing and then construction. Most recently, we awarded two additional projects to Ocean Wind Two and Atlantic Shores for a total of over 2,600 megawatts. And those projects will be in operation in 2028 and 2029. There are three more solicitations that are scheduled with the next one set to be issued in the fall of 2022. Next slide, please. So through our offshore wind development, we are placing a high value on how these developments can bring economic benefits to the state, our residents and our businesses. So the first three awards have resulted in a number of commitments to support these values. To highlight a few, we now have the development of EEW, uh, building a monopile fabrication facility at the Port of Paulsboro in New Jersey. We have commitments to develop nacelle assembly facilities at the New Jersey Windport, and almost $40 million in programs committed to support workforce training, small and diverse businesses, and programs to benefit disadvantaged communities. Next slide, please. So uh, apologies, because you're not seeing some of the text on the slide. Uh, but what this lease is, uh, what this image is showing is um, a new map. Um, perhaps you heard, uh, but the other week, uh, the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management, which is part of the federal government, announced that they will be issuing an auction for lease areas off the coast of New Jersey in an area called the New York, New Jersey Bight. And that is what the map is showing here. So these colored um, shapes here in the map show new lease areas where we will have new developers coming to the New Jersey region that are looking to build offshore wind uh, developments. Uh, and this is showing a very robust uh, pipeline of projects in New Jersey. Can go to the next slide, please. So as I mentioned, uh, people are an important part of our offshore wind strategy. And we've been working to uh, support the people side of offshore wind uh, through the development of the Wind Institute. This will be a centralized entity to coordinate and advance offshore wind workforce training, research and innovation efforts. We've awarded $4 million in grants to date uh, to establish safety, training facilities, uh, wind turbine technician training programs, and welding and painting programs. And we will be continuing to roll out programs in the coming years to support uh, workers and businesses in this industry. Next slide, please. As mentioned, ports are a critical part of New Jersey's strategy to build this industry. And there are three main kinds of ports, marshalling, manufacturing, and operations and maintenance. We have the Port of Paulsboro committed to EEW for their monopile manufacturing, and that facility's uh, construction is underway. On the operations and maintenance side, uh, both the developers that have current lease areas and projects in New Jersey are building our plans to build operations and maintenance facilities in Atlantic City. And most excitedly, the New Jersey Windport 
offers both marshalling and manufacturing space for offshoring components and developers. Next slide, please. The New Jersey Windport is the state's flagship investment. It's the first purpose-built offshore wind port in the country and will provide over 200 acres of space for manufacturing and marshalling. The site was selected after a two-year process evaluating different ports throughout the state and was chosen due to its unique characteristics. It has ample space and open access to the Atlantic Ocean with no bridge restrictions. We recently issued a solicitation for tenants at the New Jersey Wind Port and construction at the port is beginning and the first phase is set to open in 2024. Next slide, please. Pallavi had already touched on the offshore wind tax credit, but I did just want to uh, reiterate that this is a, um, we're very excited about this tax credit. It offers a uh, significant support for companies making uh, large investments in the state, uh, providing a tax credit of 40 to 60% typically for offshore wind, uh, for investments for an offshore wind facility that employs at least 150 new full-time employees. Next slide, please. Lastly, I wanted to note that we do have a New Jersey supply chain registry this links, direct, this links directly with a national directory. Um, so you can easily find New Jersey firms that you may want to partner with as you look to um, engage in the offshore wind industry or also for companies to find you. Uh, so we, we welcome you to, check, to take a look at this directory. Next slide. In closing, I just wanted to share the contact information for some of the members of our team. We are, uh, we are growing, so they're not all on the slide, uh, but we welcome uh, further connections with you all. Thank you so much. え、マダカシラさん、ベッカさん、ありがとうございました。え、最後に、え、輸送物流インフラの状況につきまして、え、輸送ロジスティックス部門、え、リード、エリカ、ブレイターマンさんよりえ、Thank you very much. Can we advance to the next slide, please? If your company is looking to serve the U.S. market, New Jersey is the place to be. New Jersey offers a leading combination of infrastructure and workforce with an environment that encourages both employee and business development. We have much to offer on the infrastructure side with the location that we have and all of the assets that are here. We have best in class transportation ecosystem that allows development and growth of the industry. We have a strong and dynamic workforce and we have an environment where you will want to raise your family and to live. Next slide, please. New Jersey's infrastructure and location are key to reaching the U.S. markets and beyond. More than one third of the U.S. population is within a one day's drive within the range of a single truck driver to make a delivery. At the heart of the Northeast Corridor, the, we have access to the number one airport system in the United States and the largest port on the East Coast connects not only to the road system here, but also to a railroad system that reaches out to all of North America. In addition, because of the significant technology infrastructure within New Jersey, our population is the most connected of any area of the United States. Next slide, please. From New Jersey, you're only one day's drive to 33% of the population and an even larger percentage of America's spending power because the Northeast area has a very well-educated population. On average, Americans in this area spend more than the rest of the United States. By locating a distribution operation or a service operation within New Jersey, you are able to service a very large portion of 
the available market right from here. Next slide, please. Because of these many advantages, many large companies that are in the distribution and logistics space have already chosen New Jersey as their home base of operations. Many of these names you might recognize as international players, but in addition to them, there are many local and regional operations that can be partnered with in order to help launch new companies into our market or to be the targets of acquisition should you be interested. Next slide, please. Because New Jersey has invested so much in having strong schools and has created an ec ecosystem that supports and develops talent, we're able to offer the workforce needed to support the continued growth of companies of all sizes. Our total workforce is over 4.5 million people, but among those, 2.5 million of them are high-skilled population. They have advanced degrees or advanced trade training. As a result of that, some companies that you might recognize like Amazon have chosen New Jersey as their home base of operations. Next slide, please. New Jersey is indeed a very diverse population. We have, in addition to the things that my other presenters have mentioned, uh, we have a very large um, population of folks who speak English as a second language or speak another language at home. And that is very useful in um, companies who are looking to create an international presence in the United States. They know our culture and they know yours as well. So that makes for great advantage. Next slide, please. Our team at the NJEDA works very closely with the folks that choose New Jersey. The NJEDA has many programs that help encourage companies to locate or stay or expand here in New Jersey. We want business to grow here. But in addition to that, we partner very closely with the folks that choose New Jersey. In this case, Ryan Fox is my partner in the transportation and logistics sector. And between our two organizations, we are able to help coordinate and facilitate to make the process of moving to New Jersey or expanding in New Jersey much easier. Thank you. Hi, thank you very much, Breta Man-san. それでは、ここから質疑応答に移らせていただきます。事前にあのいくつかご質問をいただいてますので、まずはその中からですね、私の方でピックアップをして、講師の方々にお伺いをしたいと思います。えっと、講師の皆さん、ご準備はよろしいでしょうか。はい、じゃあ、あの準備ができたようですので、ご質問をさせていただきます。えっと、では、最初にですね、ヌーナンさんへの質問になります。ニュージャージー州の法人税は全国に比べて高い方ということなんですが、外国企業の投資誘致のためのですねインセンティブ、それから支援策などあれば教えてくださいということです。でそれからあのパンデミック以降、ニューヨークなどの,その大都市から事務所をニュージャージーに移転した企業などい,たらいるでしょうかとで、今後その数は増えていく見込みでしょうかというあのご質問です。ヌナンさん、回答をお願いできますでしょうか。マイクをオンにしてお願いしますさい。Um, well, as us being a high tax state, that's all relative.、Um, I think that you would find if you came to New Jersey that、uh, you get the great value for what you're, you're paying for. That being said, the EDA has a number of programs in support. Of organizations that come to the state that can alleviate some of that tax burden. And we have seen a great influx over the last two years of companies from New York City that have decided that they want to 
either changed the makeup of their workforce or their work site and have moved to New Jersey. Um, we, we had a very large uh, technology company, um, WebMD moved from Brooklyn to Newark. There was well over 800 jobs. Um, so yes, well, relatively speaking, some folks would think that we have high taxes. We are less than other states around us as well. You get what you pay for, as we had mentioned throughout all of these presentations, um, it, the highly educated workforce, the great environment for business in the state. And again, the number of programs that the folks at the EDA were able to talk about where we can support any kind of business that's looking to come to the state. ありがとうございます。あの、えー、追加でですね、今あのフロアの方から質問があったんですが、えー、ニューヨークとかですね、えー、トレントンという都市名があプレゼンの中にありましたけれども、あの治安面、えー、どのような状況か教えてくださいという質問が来ています。Is that for me? So I、yes. think that、uh, the city of New York has a new mayor who comes out of law enforcement, and I think that The, those areas are, are being addressed. I think. New York, this is New York, Trenton. Right. right, right. Oh, Newark. Oh, sorry. Oh, so yes, Newark and Trenton, during, during the pandemic, we are very fortunate that,、um, and through some of the highlighted issues around the country over the last couple of years, that both Newark and Trenton. Have been very safe places and they are continue to be safe for the companies. And we're seeing an explosion of companies coming to Newark. And we're hoping that they will travel down to Trenton as well. And if you come to Newark, you'll see all the cranes where we're, there's a lot of construction going on. So there's a lot of new things that are happening in the, in the city, and we're very excited about that. Thank、はい、you. えー、と2つ目の質問はあのサバリーさんへの質問になります、えー。ニュージャージー州のライフサイエンス分野への投資を増やすといったあの目標の達成に向けてはですね、まあ、その若い企業とかあのスタートアップの流入が必要になっていくと思いますと。で、えー、そのライフサイエンス分野のスタートアップに向けた支援策としてはですね、まあ、どのようなものがあるのかという質問です。えー、サバリーさん、いかがでしょうか。えー Well, first of all, thank you for the great question.、Um, I think、uh, one of our key mandates、uh, that we have as sector leads、uh, for the state of New Jersey through the EDA is, in fact, that to support、um, especially the new startups because they are the life、uh, of bringing、uh, new innovation within our state.、Um, I, I would like to speak,、uh, first of all, As the EDA in whole, we have 20 plus programs、uh, between、um, uh, financial tools and, and uh, uh, tax incentives.、Uh, but those that are key to supporting the startups, which is fundamental for this question, I'd like to point out、um, what we call New Jersey Accelerate,、uh, which is a Uh, program. It's an accelerator, a accelerator program geared to,、uh, to recruit new startups and bring them and help,、um, help them、uh, land in our state.、Um, there is、uh, indeed another one called New Jersey Covest Fund,、uh, which is in fact, it helps provide seed funding specific、uh, to startups and specifically to the area of life sciences. So this is a, a key one for us and for my sector.、Um, Another one that is very popular is called New Jersey Ignite,、uh, which offers support by offsetting、um, rent costs. And of course, let's not forget, as I spoke in my、uh, slides about、uh, the availability of、uh, life science space, the uh, incubators uh, that are offered、uh, in, in the state of New Jersey, in particular,、uh, we look at those、uh, to bring、uh, a lot of help and aid to uh, uh, life science startups. So, hopefully, that answers the question. Thank you. Thank you so much for that question. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
を発表しました、えー、ニュージャージーでもその類似の計画をですね今後考える可能性はありますかという質問です。それからインフラ整備も含めてですね、日本企業に,、so、本企業に期待したいことも教えてください。ニュージャージー、actually has re、uh, released its offshore wind strategic plan about two years ago, and that was the plan that laid out the strategy for our 7.5 gigawatt goal, and we are steadily implementing that plan. So, this includes significant investments of actually over、um, a billion dollars、um, in,、uh, in various projects, including for the New Jersey Wind Port, which I had mentioned,、uh, the offshore wind tax credit, and、uh, workforce training and innovation efforts. On the second question, in terms of expectations for companies in the field of environmental policy, Uh, certainly,、uh, there's going to be a big need for environmental surveying work, permitting, site assessments, work of that nature as the、uh, developments take place. So, in, in, when companies are, when developers are coming in、uh, and looking at the opportunity to build the wind farms. So, in the opportunities for, for Japanese companies are there as well. And you know, we certainly look forward for Japanese companies coming to New. Jersey to set up operations here、um, to participate in that supply chain. Thank you. 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 So, the, the 7.5 gigawatt offshore wind goal is、uh, by 2035. And New Jersey's overarching clean energy goal is to meet 100% clean energy by 2050. So, we will certainly need to increase our、uh, offshore wind generating capacity to meet that longer term 2050 goal. Hi, thank you very much. えー、ともう一つ、えー、質問が来ています、えー。洋上風力に関する、えー、サプライチェーン登録はあのメーカーに、えー、限られるんでしょうか、えー、これは安全認証に関わる機関からの質問になっています。So、all companies, all types of companies can register for the supply chain registry.、Um, what's You know, really exciting about the offshore wind industry is that it cuts across so many different types of companies,、uh, companies, in, you know, consulting、um, to manufacturing, project management, operations. And so the entire spectrum of the offshore wind industry and companies involved in it can register on that supply,、um, that supply chain registry. ありがとうございます。えー、4つ目、えー、次の質問は、えー、マダカシラさんへの質問です、えー。プレゼンテーションの資料の6ページに、えー、ありましたあ2035年に販売されるすべ、えー、ての乗用車と小型トラック、まあ、すなわちそのライトデューティービークルをです、ねえー、ゼロエミッション化の達成に向けて、まあ、最も困難と思われることは何でしょうか。それから、えー、公共充電施設の、えー、不設にあたりまして、連邦政府、あるいは民間企業と、まあ、今後どういう連携を進めていくでしょうかという質問が来ています。えー、マダカシラさん、いかがでしょうか、えー、マイクオンにしてお話しください。Thank you for the question.、Um, the, the biggest challenge is making sure that everything comes together. I mean, like I said earlier, Incentivizing customers to buy electric vehicles alone is not enough. We can have, you know, we can easily meet the target of how many ever you put a number and we will get there because people want to buy electric cars. The challenge will be ensuring that the infrastructure or behind the meter support works in parallel to support this,、um, you know, this evolution or this growth in the number of vehicles in the streets of New Jersey. That's one, one of the biggest hurdles.、Um, the, what, that being said, the New Jersey Board of Public Utilities 
recently closed a straw proposal um, that specifically wanted to better understand from the public what needs needed to be addressed in order to ensure that we could meet our light duty vehicle target. So you should expect that some of those programs are going to be put in place um, starting 2022. The other challenge that we are seeing from the Economic Development Authority is to make sure that you can, let's say you have you know, 10 million cars, you will need mechanics who know how to train, how, who are trained to know how to support servicing of these vehicles. And so we are actively considering and investing through our community college programs, efforts to train our workforce to ensure that we have qualified mechanics and through programs like the NJ Zip, bringing in some of this support ancillary parts and uh, supply parts into the state here. So I think the, the, the overarching challenge is to make sure that all of them, all of these individual initiatives will work together. ありがとうございます。えっ、ー、とマダカシラさんにもう一つ、えー、フロアから質問が来ています。えー、100% 100% クリーンエナジーの実現に向けて、えー、ガスの扱いはですね、えー、どのように考えていますかという質問なんですけれども、えー、ご回答お願いできますでしょうか。Sure.、Um, so obviously there is any number of arguments that are globally being made as to Facing out of natural gas and trying to transition into、uh, alternate fuels such as hydrogen or more specifically、uh, green hydrogen technologies. So, the state of New Jersey actually has a fuel cell task force that we are actively working with other state agencies as well as the private sector companies, companies like Air Liquide.、Um, Toyota is also on the panel. Um, on the task force, we are working together to identify how we can deploy some of these technologies、um, in, in the state of New Jersey. In addition, obviously, from a clean energy standpoint, it will be important to ensure that the state can support、um, new technologies like carbon. はいえー、っとちょっと音声が途切れてしまいました。えー、っと続いて、えー、それではあの、えー、次の質問、えー、これはあのブレイターマンさんへの質問になります、えー。ニューヨーク州、ニューヨーク州では MTA ですね、メトロポリタントランスポーテーションオーソリティが、まあ、将来の,その輸送システムに関するイノベーションについて、えー、こう外国企業も含めてですね、カンファレンスを開催したようなあの実績があります。ニュージャージーでもこういうイベントの開催予定はあるでしょうかと。いうことそれから、えー、このニュージャージーの公共輸送システム整備において、えー、外国企業と、まあ、どういう連携が可能でしょうかという質問が来ています、えー、ブレイターマンさん回答をお願いできますでしょうか So the transit system in New Jersey is, is controlled by our state and as a result any of the、uh, types of Conferences or innovation sessions that we might hold will have to be co、um, coordinated through the governor's office and through the Department of Transportation.、Um, we would like to, you know, we work with them on a regular basis、um, in order to help encourage the growth and innovation in our state. And so、um, we don't have any of these planned that I know of, but we would certainly consider that. If you may, Eric, I may just add into that.、Uh, You know, obviously, New Jersey,、uh, as the state that has the densest commuter rail network in the country, thinks a lot about、uh, mobility innovation.、Uh, we have in the past had、uh, these sorts of conferences where we've looked at、uh, bringing companies together to think creatively about、uh, mobility innovation. Really, the focus over the last few years has been implementing a lot of those changes. Uh, especially in our state's、uh, major rail system, NJ Transit.、Uh, we are now looking、uh, to launch new pilot programs around uh, mobility uh, innovation. Uh, I would just point to just last month,、uh, we launched a, a new pilot program for、uh, automated or autonomous electric vehicles in our capital city, Trenton. And are looking、uh, to partner with the transit authority on other similar pro programs、uh, in that respect.、Uh, 
in addition to the MTA, uh, and, and we do procure uh, a number of uh, our rolling stock from foreign companies and have a number of companies, uh, including some Japanese companies who are very important uh, in those supply chains, uh, we'll continue those conversations. Uh, but I would also say in addition to mobility, movement of, of, of people, uh, movement of goods is a hugely important area for us. And we were recently selected as a finalist uh, I'm, I'm sure Eric has said this before, uh, for uh, the federal award around smart ports. So we think that's a, a huge area where we can uh, play an especially large role of bringing companies together through our institutions to focus on this sort of area. So be on the lookout for those sorts of programs. Thank you. Thank you. えっと、まだかしらさん、さっき、えっと、音、音声が途中で途切れてしまったんですが、あの、ガスの扱いについて、あの、短く回答できますでしょうか。I apologize. My computer just dropped the connection here. I was trying to get back on.、Um, in terms of、uh, addressing emissions from natural gas, I think the other technologies that are interesting are certainly technologies like carbon capture.、Um, and That is also an area that the state of New Jersey is actively seeking companies that can come and set up their business here in New Jersey.、Uh, we also have a clean tech seed grants, so grants to support very early stage companies, essentially in all these flavors of technology.、Um, and so we're beginning to see carbon capture as a very young technology, and so is hydrogen.、Um, but we are already beginning to see. A few companies here in New Jersey that are innovating in the space, and we're excited about that. I may just add one bit to that, if you may.、Um, I imagine there are companies on, on this call who are interested in both sides of this,、uh, this question.、Um, we are, with the Murphy administration, clear eyed that we are marching towards 100% clean energy, but we want to do so in a clear, planned, and consistent transition、uh, in a way that allows businesses to. Plan their investment horizons that allows them to transition appropriately,、uh, that allows them to continue to use transition fuels appropriately. So,、um, you know, while we are clear about our long term objectives, there's a reason why that is a 2050 goal, and that's to give everyone the stability needed to make investments today、uh, so that they, we can make that transition over time. Thank you very much. これ最後の質問になります。あのジェンベッカーさんへの質問になります。えー、シンプルな質問ですが、えー、洋上風力発電 7.5 ギガワットのために発電機は何機ぐらい必要と考えていますかという質問が来ています。いかがでしょうか ?So the, the answer actually depends.、Uh, the... Uh, technology for wind turbines is rapidly changing. And we've seen just in the, the past few years, the amount of energy that can be generated from just one turbine is increasing.、Uh, so it depends on、uh, the turbine that is selected for each development.、Uh, but we can expect、um, between you know, 12 megawatts Upwards to 15 megawatts, and the industry is looking at increasing that even more in the near future、uh, per turbine. ありがとうございます。Five hundred and six hundred and fifty or so turbines、uh, over the next handful of years. はい、ありがとうございます。えっとそれではえっとお時間になってしまいましたので、えここで、えー、質疑応答を終わりたいと思います。えー、講演、それから質疑応答にご対応いただいた講師の皆様に、えー、改めて感謝を申し上げます。えっと、それでは、えっと、本ウェビナーの最後に、えー、主催者を代表しまして、えー、ニュージャージー州政府経済開発機構戦略部門開発、ストラテジックセクターディベロップメント、マネージングディレクターのおービル・ペンダンス様より、えー、閉会の挨拶をいただきます。ペンダンスさん、よろしくお願いします。マイクをオンにしてお話しください。Yes, thank you.、Uh, I would like to thank all participants in today's discussion. I think very informative. And I am pleased to say that it was an honor and a privilege to be able to present to such an esteemed group of Japanese companies and organizations. We trust that we conveyed the attractiveness and benefits of establishing your business in New Jersey.
and as you as you heard, there are many. Uh, and in fact, we have a strong track record with Japanese business with over 200 companies and 26,000 employees currently in New Jersey. Uh, so we have developed a strong foundation. Um, we are very we are a very diverse state, and we welcome global companies and Japanese companies specifically with open arms. So the New Jersey Economic Development Authority, in partnership with Choose New Jersey, are here to assist you in exploring that opportunity and to answer any and all questions that you may have in that process. And we look forward to our future collaborations. Thank you very much. はい、えー、温かいメッセージをありがとうございます。えー、ペンダーさんありがとうございました。えー、と本日のウェビナーではあー、ニュージャージー州政府経済開発機構と、えー、チューズニュージャージーから、えー、講師をお招きして、えー、ライフサイエンス、再生可能エネルギー、輸送ロジスティック、まあ、こういった分野について、えー、同州、ニュージャージー州の都市環境を解説いたしました。えー、本ウェビナーが、えー、ご参加の日本企業の皆様にとって、ニュージャージー州でのビジネス展開の一助となることを願っております。最後に主催者からのお願いですけれども、ウェビナーからご退出いただく際にアンケート画面が表示されますので、回答へのご協力をよろしくお願いします。本日はお忙しい中をご参加いただきまして、誠にありがとうございました。これにてウェビナーを終了いたします。